We are in for a wild one today. Well, I should say I am, but you're in for a treat because today we're going to be looking well, about downhill. Downhill, but specifically on a cross country bike. <laughs> I'm here today for this most deadly of descents on my trusty Canyon XC bike. And it's got everything you'd expect of an XC bike. It's got skinny tires, weight saving bits and bobs wherever possible, and a riding position designed to help me go fast on the ups and the flats, but uh, not necessarily the downs. But what makes descending on one of these so different compared to one of these? Well, quite a bit actually, I must you know, in essence, they may look the same. Full surf, disc brakes, and a one by setup. The characteristics of them are hugely different, but I think that's enough about the bike. Let's dive in some top tips for descending on a cross-country bike. <music> to drop or not to drop, that is the question. And I'm not talking about the drop into this turn that I'm gonna to have to do. I'm talking about the dropper on your bike. Now, modern day cross country bikes with changing geometry and modern day tracks also changing with riding styles. A lot of riders are adopting using a dropper post. However, most are still adopting a solid post just because they'd rather not pay the weight penalty. I myself am one of those guys. I run a solid seat post because I'd rather not lug the extra weight back up the hill. But how does it affect you? Whew, well, coming down something like this. So depending on what you do run then, it can play a huge role on how you tackle something very similar to this pretty wild section I'm on here. Like I said, I run a solid seat post because my, I'm confident in my bike handling skills and what I can tackle. However, my uphill fitness or my fitness in general, what I think anyway, is probably not as good as those thoroughbred XC guys. So I opt to save the weight. A lot of guys who maybe don't have the confidence when it comes to descending or the technical abilities uh, do like to run a dropper post because it can just help give them that extra uh, mind game, a bit of a boost if you like, when they are going back downhill and they can just slam it and not have to think about it. Oh. <laughs> if you are running a dropper, then my advice here, so my first top tip if you like, is well, slam that seat post way in advance, way up the trail, that way it's down, out the way, and you don't have to think about it. You can just focus and concentrate on the task in hand and what's coming up. 160 mm rotor, check. Super lightweight two pot brake, check. Wishing I was on a bike with really wide, super downhill, tacky, ultra mega grippy tires, also check. Brakes can be an often overlooked thing when it comes to a cross country bike. People will often look for just the lightest brake they can get their hands on without really thinking about the power it delivers or anything. Uh, a great example of this is bikes these days, they're getting so much more capable that the speeds are higher. So therefore you need more braking power. Something I'll often do is actually, if the track dictates, put a 180 mil rotor on the front. So it's definitely worth something to think about. I find this to be the case, especially riding the full sus. The extra speed it carries and the confidence I have means I'd rather sacrifice that 30 gram weight saving to actually have a more powerful uh, stopping force. But how and where should you brake, I hear you asking. Well, if you've got a particularly gnarly looking section, like uh, oh, this one behind me, then there are a few key points to try and stick to. Firstly, being light on the front brake is a really important one. Due to the nature of an XC bike with that longer stem and that putting more of your weight over the front, if you're too grabby on that front brake, well, you're going straight out the front door, which is never good. Try to be nice and light on the front brake. Use that in tandem with the rear brake to help scrub your speed before a section so that you're already coming into it nice and controlled. Scrubbing that speed before you get to the section is gonna help you get through it in a much more controlled manner. If you come in far too quick and grabbing too much front brake, well, like I said, there's that risk of going straight OTB, but also you're gonna find it much harder to slow down in the section just due to the nature of the less powerful brakes and the less grippy tires. It's just gonna be a little bit more out of control. Brake early. Ride that section nice and controlled, come out smiling out the other side. Line choice, it's a crucial part to any kind of riding and descending really, but it can play an even bigger role when on a lightweight cross country bike. The get out of jail free card of having lots of big squishy travel and grippy tires 
well, that's gone on these things. So a bit more precision and uh, experience, if you like, is going to be needed. So we've got a pretty wild section behind me. Let's go take a little look at some lines. Right, I've come to this section in the trail and there are three distinct lines to choose from. We've got a left, a middle, and a right high line. The, the middle's probably the quickest, but it does involve jumping off a stump. The left is probably the easiest, but is the long way around. And the right, well, that's fairly off camber, so equally tricky, but does set you up pretty nicely for the turn as well. You're gonna have to be careful here because the fastest may not always be the best to take. It can actually be more hazardous. You know, you could jump off of this, puncture, crash there, I say, especially if you're not running a dropper. And uh, it's just not, the risk versus reward isn't there. But let's hit all three lines and see which one works well. Where is it? So that's all the three lines done then. And actually, looking at them now, having ridden them, the rider's right, or far left as we look at it here, turned out to be not only the best in terms of smoothness, but also setting me up best for the exit for the section, uh, which is really interesting to know because had I not tried all three lines, I wouldn't have known that. So by experimenting, choosing your lines wisely, well, you go faster, smoother, and just a better ride. But having said that, I think I'm gonna go practice my line choice a little bit more. A bit more descending for today. A bit of downhill, love a bit of downhill. Oh, what a fun day that has been, doing downhill runs on a cross country bike. It's been a bit wild. I'll be honest, I got a little bit loose at times, but I hope I've been able to impart some wisdom on how to descend on an XC bike too all of you lovely guys and girls out there. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget, if you want to see more, hit the old subscribe button. Uh, and who knows, let us know if you want to see more cross-country content as well. That's it for now, but thank you very much, everyone. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>